a treat. So will you please welcome Cameron? Thank you so much. It's such a blessing. Love you, love you, love you. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's such an honor to be with you tonight. I see some familiar faces that I see in other meetings that we show up here. Praise God. Please be seated. Thank you so much for your warm welcome. You know, before I get started, the atmosphere here is so charged and such a beautiful presence. You know, and I tell you what, atmosphere reflects leadership. I'm bar none, just period. You know what I'm saying? It's the atmosphere is always a reflection of leadership. You know, Justin, Pastor Justin and Annette, wonderful leaders, wonderful pastors, and Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn, their mom and dad to me, and Angela, praise God. And it's such a wonderful honor to be here. I just got a call this morning from Justin, says, Pastor Justin, I, I know Justin from when he was just Justin. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, he says, can you be here tonight? I said, let me make a call. <laughs> and I made the t- turned some things around and uh, drove down. We just got here. So, um, and we're going to have a great time tonight. Yeah. Are you expecting? Yeah. Praise God. It's wonderful. I, I just, I feel like, like, I feel like hugging the Holy Spirit like this right now. And I, I don't want to just let go, you know. I, you know, you're really in it when you begin to sing in this spirit. Just comes out of your spirit, you know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Danny, where are you, Danny? Where'd you go? There he is. Wonderful, my brother. Praise God. What a powerful worship. Glory to God. All your leadership, all the uh, worship team. Praise God. Thank you so much. Um, I was um, praying about tonight, and uh, I've got like seven different directions we can go tonight. Glory to God. And Justin says, just flow as long as you want. I said, okay, I'll let him out by midnight. (laughs) No, I'm kidding you. Praise God. I do have a tendency of going, (laughs) you know. But um, before I get started, I want to thank you for partnering with us. You know, uh, Heritage of Faith and JSMI are partners with our ministry. I'm sure a few months back, you heard about the work that, you know, the earthquake that took place in Turkey. And you guys sold into that. And we've been involved in that. I went to Turkey just recently and came back, assessed the whole problem. You know, a lot of times what happens in these events that happen like that, all the big boys show up and um, they do their thing and uh, you don't hear about it anymore after that. And I remember one one of my friends who's done disaster relief work quite a bit, he said to me, he says, Cameron, really find out what God wants you to do, but this thing is not an over, it's not an event. He said this, the, the, you know, the, the effect of that uh, earthquake there 7.8 7.8 rector scale. Okay. Think about Antioch. That's where we're focusing on. And I'm going to show you a quick video in a second. But um, just a report to see what your seed is doing, really, as far as that goes. But in Antioch, as uh, uh, town, obviously, you know, Antioch is in the Bible. Okay. The first disciples were called Christian in Antioch. Amen. And I was just there, and the Lord led me there by his spirit. He told me, he says, I want you to follow my lead. I'll take you to a place where I want you to put a base there and just really work there. Focus on that area. So he did. God connected us, and just, it was just so supernatural. And I love it when God leads you, you know. If, if he leads you, he's going to have to uh, take care of everything, you know. If you go, it's your deal. <laughs> And it's usually a struggle, right? So we went there. The town is a 400, it's 400,000 people there. Okay. Think about this. 90 to 97% of the buildings are in, inhabitable. They're, they're uninhabitable. That's the impact that it had on that city and surrounding as far as that goes. So um, I want you to roll that first video if you have it ready, please. Take a quick look at this. Here with the Voice of Freedom Ministries. It is an honor to share with you what God is doing for the precious people of Turkey affected by the earthquake earlier this year. We thank you for your prayers and your support. The people in Turkey are grateful. They are so grateful for the life-changing help they are receiving in this challenging time of their lives. Here's a brief recap 
and a current update on our efforts taking place in Turkey. I actually traveled to Turkey from the end of April, April 26th through May 22nd of this year for almost four weeks and spent about 12 days meeting with our team and the long-term relationships we have in Turkey. We've been able to help thousands of people. We also prayerfully plan for expansion projects that will affect even greater numbers of people for much longer term. The Lord has led us to the city of Antioch and the surrounding villages with a population of 400,000 people where over 90% of the homes are structurally uninhabitable. Through the help of your prayers and our partnership, we have been able to accomplish much for helping these thousands with natural needs like hygiene kits and shelter, as well as ministering to them with food and showing them the support and hope, hope and love. So far, with our team in Turkey, and by assisting local ministries and churches whose boots are on the ground, we have been feeding over 3,000 people daily, building containers and hubbits for sustainable shelter for hundreds of individuals and families, and providing needed hygiene kits and natural resources. I'll be traveling again uh, to Turkey by the end of September to assess our progress and plan with our team for helping in wintertime. We covet your prayers and your financial support. We want to thank all of our partners and friends who have already been involved since the beginning. We are showing the love of Christ in practical ways and reaching Muslims with the love of Christ. I'll be updating you again once I'm there and show you what we are accomplishing together. We love you very much. Thank you again. Let's do it again now. No, I'm kidding you. No, so your partnership has enabled us to go there and support uh, the ministries that are with boots on the ground there, if you will. And, uh, and again, I wanted to just personally thank you. Thank Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn, uh, Justin and Pastor Justin and Pastor Annette. Praise God for them. And uh, uh, things are working. Glory to God. You know, um, every place that you minister, you have to have a strategy for that place. You can't just go in Turkey and have a crusade. You all follow what I'm saying here. They'll ship your saddle home when you do that. <laughs> well, they do. They really, literally do. If you do so. In fact, there was in the earlier part of the earthquake time, you know, there was a mission organization that came in there, you know, really lack of wisdom. And they began to um, give with things that they were giving, blankets and clothes and all that they were giving out. Uh, they began to stuff Bibles in there with them, and they nearly got every missionary uh, deported out of Turkey, because they said, oh, they're here with the propaganda and all that, so you have to use wisdom, and what it takes in Turkey, uh, it's a long-term plan, where you just begin to show them what Christianity is all about, what Jesus is all about, the way you live it, by the way you live it, and by the way you love, you know, you know, scripture says in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, he says, let love be your highest aim Amen. in the New Living Translation. Highest aim. Glory to God. And when that's in you, when the, the ground of your heart okay, is saturated with the love of God, established in the love of God, everything works. You all with me? Everything will work. You know, I, um, you know, I, you know I, I, one of the best examples of that, I truly can say this, and, um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm here, because I talk about Brother Jerry all the time. In Farsi, everywhere I go, I brag about Brother Jerry, you know. I don't know another man that walks in the love of God and the mercy of God like Brother Jerry does. I honestly don't. I mean, he's mercy personified, <laughs> you know, as far as that goes, you know. And that's just making the love of God the, your highest aim. Amen. So it's just an honor to be connected. I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, they're mom and dad to me. You know, had the opportunity to serve in this ministry for like a total of seven years back in the 90s and uh, early 2000s and what have you. And we had a great time out here. Learned a lot, praise God. Everything I do is because of truly what I learned from Brother Jerry. Amen. I truly say that. Sincerely, I say that. I remember one time flying with Brother Jerry and then I knew one thing. Uh, when I first came uh, on staff, 
Brother Jerry called me to the office the first week I'm on staff. He says, um, I'm going to give you a faith project. I said, great. I'm all excited. I'm all fired up about faith project. He says, so we need to do this. And he told me what we're going to do. He says, and it's going to cost about a million dollars. And every bit, I mean, my face turned white. He says, that's going to be your responsibility. And he saw the change in my face and all that. He says, Cameron, a million dollars is not a lot of money. <laughs> I said, okay, maybe not to you. <laughs> you know, I thought about it. But, you know, but I learned some things. I remember flying. And a few other things he shared with me. One thing I knew is that when I'm in Brother Jerry's presence, to keep my mouth shut and just do what I'm supposed to do. Okay. If he asks me a question, I'll answer it. But I'm here to serve the man of God. Right. And I did my best to do so. But I remember one time flying with him one time. And he turned around and he says, Cameron, do you have any questions? It's just him and I in the plane. And Willie. You know. And uh, I said, do I ever? <laughs> you know? So I asked him one question. And for the next 45 minutes, I was his audience. And the lesson I learned on that flight has transformed my personal life and ministry. I am not exaggerating about that. Wow. That one message. Knowing clearly when God speaks to you, how to put that to work. Yeah. That you actually, do you know that you've heard from heaven? So I learned by observing Brother Jerry and being in his meetings and what have you. As Brother Jerry, every year he brings a word. You know, like this year is what? The year of maximum and highest level attainable. How many are you actually experiencing that? Yeah. We are. I tell you, when Brother Jerry comes up with a word like that, I mean, I latch onto it like a bulldog. I'm saying, I'm, I'm going to milk that thing. I tell you, I'll go for it. Are you with me? And uh, well, what's really interesting is this. I learned from Brother Jerry. I said, well, God, if you can talk to Brother Jerry like that, you can talk to me. Amen. If you talk to Brother Copeland like that, you can talk to me. Yes, sir. I'm in. Are you with me? Yes. You know, he thinks he is the, God's favorite child, but I am too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, um, but I really pressed in. From the early days on when I came to the Lord that if I can just hear God's voice, I can win in life. I can make a difference. I can truly make something for God happen on earth. Are you with me? And that's been the catalyst. That's been that, that lesson every year, Brother Jerry. I remember one time in 1997, the word the Lord had given Brother Jerry was, it's the year, 97 is the year of heaven on earth. That's what it was. So we flew out to Houston one day to Pastor uh, Ford's church. And, uh, and he began to preach on the year of heaven on earth. In 1998, we went back to fast Pastor Ford's church. And what happened was uh, Pastor Ford, before he introduced Brother Jerry, he says, Now, you all remember Brother Jerry was here last year. He said that 97 was the year of heaven on earth. He says he just didn't tell us that we had to go through hell to get to heaven. <laughs> In fact, I just saw Pastor Ford at Brother Jesse's conference, and I reminded him of that. He just burst out laughing and all that. But, you know, every word, the key is this. When God gives us a prophetic word, that's what I learned from Brother Jerry. Okay. When he gives that word to you, it is your safety, if you will, against things that are going to happen during that time frame. Meaning like what happens when the word is given? Satan comes immediately to steal the word, right? So Satan's got his own plan, but God has his plan as well. And what he does, God tells us of things to come, right? But he also gives you the answer of what is to come. So whenever you hear like maximum, the challenge, chances are that everything in your, in, in your finances are going to, as an example, are going to come under pressure. But that's where you have to know that you have a covenant right that is sealed in the blood of Jesus. And you cannot back down. You can moan and groan just because you're getting under pressure to back off. That's where you push in. You press in and you don't back off until you experience everything God has spoken to you. Amen. So now with that in mind, last year, 22, 22, uh, 2022. And this is what I love. You know, whenever God, Brother Jerry has a prophetic word, what's amazing about it is this. The Spirit of God speaks to me. I mean, him and I don't talk very often. I mean, I usually talk to him when I'm at the conference or what have you. Uh, you know, just wish him happy birthday on, through a text through, on his birthday or Christmas and what have you, things like that. 
But uh, well, what's real, so there's not a, always communication going on between us. But, you know, in the spirit, when you're connected, you're hearing the same things. Are you with me? Amen. That's when you honor the anointing, on, the anointing will honor you. Yes. Are you with me? That's right. So having said that, in 22, I was in, um, we were, my wife, stand up, honey. This is my beautiful wife, Angela. Praise God. So we were celebrating our anniversary, first anniversary, okay, in, and we were in heaven, in Santorini, Greece. We're celebra- celebrating our anniversary, and we had just got there the night before our anniversary, and I, we're in bed, you know, we got up, I get up, she's still asleep, I get up on the 7th, May 7th of 22, which is our anniversary day. And I tell you, as soon as I open my mouth, uh, my, uh, my mouth, my eyes, the Spirit of God speaks to me. And he says to me, the next seven years, and the woman, he said, I've never, I mean, the Lord's been giving me words for the year, but I have never heard for the next seven years. And the Lord said to me, the next seven years will be seven years of super abundance for those who will heed the word I'm giving you and begin to practice it in their lives. Okay, so. I got up, and then the Lord took me to a scripture. In fact, I want you to go to the scripture with me, please. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you fired up today, tonight? In Genesis chapter 41. Look with me, Genesis 41. Praise God. When he said that word to me, it was just like far out. Okay? Have you ever had a far out word? I mean, really... Every word of God is far out, you know, because you're going to have to use your faith to lay hold of it, you know, because he always speaks to you beyond you, beyond your natural abilities, beyond your experiences, beyond your, what you have in your account, behind, beyond, beyond all of that, right? He always goes that far. So in, I'm going to read this to you out of the Amplified, okay? So it says this in chapter 41. And verse 47, the Lord, as soon as he said that to me, he says, I want you to look up Genesis 41, 47, just like that. And I don't know, I don't know what Genesis 41, 47 is. I mean, I know it's about Joseph, you know, but I didn't know exactly what that verse is. So when I open it up, I begin to shout in my, in, in bed, nearly woke her up. And you don't want to wake her up when she sleep. Because it could be. Serious. <laughs> it says, chapter uh, 41, 47, in the seven abundant years, right. hallelujah, yeah. the earth brought forth by handfuls. Another translation says, abundantly, by handfuls. And I love what Amplified says, for each seed planted. That means, No seed goes without a harvest. Are you with me? But I want you to imagine, this is what I began to see. And this, I was praying on the way down here. I was pondering on this. That if I could come and say, I got a surprise for you. Would you get excited? If you knew the next seven years. If you knew that the next seven years are going to be on this scale that we just read in the scripture. And this is thus say the Lord, by the way. Right? This is not Cameron's idea. I just backed up what he told me in my spirit by his scripture. Okay? If you knew that, you have a blueprint for the next seven years. Now, it's up to you. See, we sow the seed. Our responsibility is to sow the seed of the word as well as anything that God asks us to sow monetarily. Okay? The Lord gives the harvest. There's obviously watering time, pray, you know, praise, worship, prayer, all that stuff, right? In between that. But God gives the harvest. But when it comes on to reaping, we reap. Yes. And reaping isn't automatic. You see, a lot of Christians have this idea in their mind that reaping, everything is just going to get into their storage or in the storehouse. It doesn't work that way. You have to reap. Are you with me? You have to reap. God doesn't reap for you. There are certain things that God doesn't do for us. He doesn't answer prayers that he's already answered. You follow what I'm saying here? He doesn't. 
If he's answered it, and now it's up to you, it's your responsibility, you have to lay hold of what God has given you or has spoken to you. Yeah. Okay? So we do the reaping. If you know the next seven years, the way I like to say it this way, the next seven years is harvest time. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. And the measure of the harvest, the abundance you're going to reap is, I want you to get this, is up to you. That's why I love what Brother Jerry has been meant. When I heard that, of course, he hadn't talked about maximum. And get this. So it comes around like I've learned this from Brother Jerry. Right on September, October, I begin to seek the Lord, you know. Just like, I mean, if it works for him, I'm going to I'm gonna milk that thing. I'm telling you. I'm going to do it exactly like he does, right? So September, October came around. And I said, Lord, what about 23? He says, I've already talked to you about the next seven years. I said, oh, yeah. Are you with me? I said, okay. And then next thing you know, of course, he began to speak to me about that. And I've been ministering on that everywhere we've gone. But what began to happen is the next thing I hear, but the jury talks about what the Lord spoke to him about maximum. See, the correlation of what the two go together. That's how you know the spirit of God is speaking to you. Are you with me? God confirms his word through the prophets, if you will. And I consider Brother Jerry as a prophet. I consider Brother Copeland as a prophet. So the, and I consider all the, uh, the, the spiritual leaders that God has placed in my life. I listen, I tap in, and I, I'm telling you, I get hold of that anointing. There's been times I said, Lord, that anointing that's on Brother Jerry, I, I'm drawn from that by faith in Jesus' mighty name. Okay. But see, the way you activate the harvest is with your mouth first. You've got to begin to get to a place that the word that God has given you becomes yours. Not Brother Jerry's anymore. See, he believes it and he receives it. But you've got to take it on personally. You've got to get serious about your harvest. Because there's a lot of work to do and God needs you to lay hold of your harvest. Okay? So he goes on, look at this for me, with me. So he says, 40, verse uh, 47, I said, uh, In the seven abundant years the earth brought forth by handfuls for each seed planted. Glory to God. That means you can just have, I mean, it's up to you. How much seed you sow? That's one. But then every seed is going to give by handfuls and abundantly. Okay, and the way the Lord said it to me was super abundant. Glory to God. Amen. Super abundance. Now, the ver next verse says, And he gathered, talking about Joseph, he gathered up all the surplus. Surplus. Now, I want you to understand something over here. What he gathered up, what we're about to read, this next verse, it's only, what he's talking about here is only 20%. Remember, he, he told Pharaoh, put away one-fifth. So that's what he's doing here. So the one-fifth, which is 20% of what he gathered up, the surplus of food that he gathered up for the seven years in the land of Egypt and stored up the food in cities. He stored away in each city the food from the fields around it. I want you to get this next verse. And Joseph gathered grain as the sand of the sea. Now the 20% was like as the sand of the sea. Think about what the other 80% was. What he gathered was just the 20%. Yeah. But I want you to imagine and envision the magnitude of the harvest that God gave for the next seven years. Are you with me? Yeah. And Joseph gathered grain as the sand of the sea very much until he stopped counting. How do you like to live a life that you stop counting? Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. You don't even look at what it cost. Yeah. Let's just do it. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. All you got to do is just hear from heaven. Let's do it because we got the harvest. Yes. And I really do believe that we've come to a time based on what I'm hearing the prophets speak, Brother Jerry speak, Dr. Savell speak, and others are confirming is this, that we are in a place of harvest in such a way that we can have such overflow that we operate from the overflow never from the bottom of the barrel 
Think about your barrel being full, overflowing. Are you with me? That goes on every level. It's not just, and the way the Lord spoke this word to me was, the harvest is every harvest. Not just money, monetarily, but souls, equipment, real estate, everything you need to complete your vision. And every one of you, God has spoken a vision to you. Are you with me? Do you agree with that? I mean, you had the vision from heaven. Yes. I'm going to tell you something. The super abundance that he's talking about, it's already provided for every bit of vision. The key is this. As long as you see, yeah, someday I'm going to get that. Someday is going to be someday. So we have to take that, what God speaks, and bring it from Sunday, someday into now. Because faith always operates in now. Faith operates outside of time. You have authority over time. Are you with me? Now I want to get to that in a second. But I want you, I want to just settle this thing about, he says, until he stopped counting. For it could not be measured. That sounds like maximum and highest level attainable, right? Right? It could not be measured. I heard somebody say, you really aren't rich if you know how much you got. (laughs) When you lose count, that's when you're rich. That's where I'm going. And it's not by might. It's not by power. It is by the Spirit of God. So the more we yield to the Spirit of the living God and the Word of God, and we combine those together and we are obedient... To what the Spirit of God says. And keep in mind. He said. Make love your highest aim. Everything's got to be grounded in that love. That's our highest aim. If you will. Because we're not doing this from selfish uh, purposes. Okay. So when you do that. You step into a whole different dimension. Are you with me? Not long after the the Spirit of God spoke that word to me in Greece, in um, September, Angela and I had driven up to our to see our son in Nashville and our daughter in love, and uh, to see them and stayed with them. That first night we were there. I have this like far out dream. Have you ever had a far out dream? Did you all watch Jesus Revolution? Those, you remember the guy before the Jesus, uh, what was his name? The guy who, uh, the, the main character in the, Lonnie Frisbee, yeah. Lonnie, before Lonnie comes up, they're in like a park uh, or the yard of the school and everybody's sharing and there's this Satan worshiper guy, he's doing things and then Lonnie comes up, he says, that's far out, man. <laughs> and then he begins to talk about Jesus, you know. He's you're far out, man. You know. So sometimes we can have some far out, you know, good far out. So I had one of those good far out dreams at my son's house. I get up and say, Lord, what dear Jesus? And the Lord began to confirm to me the magnitude. It was so far out that it's so, you know, I, I have to be selective with who I share it with. Y'all follow what I'm saying here? So I said, Lord, that only, I don't have the genius. I don't have the, <laughs> I, I don't have the experience. I, I don't have any of that to be able to receive something like that. But I have you, Lord, Amen. because it's not my might nor by power, but by his spirit. Amen. Are you with me? His spirit will help us get the far out into now. Yes. All right. So I went before the Lord, and I kept praying in the Holy Ghost. I tell you, praying, I've, I've, I've been praying in the Holy Ghost more than you all, like Paul said. <laughs> more than ever. I mean, I go for my morning walks, and I pray in the Holy Ghost. I love those times, me and Jesus. In fact, I tell, you know that scripture that says, Be, my beloved, uh, dear beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost? It actually says, praying with the Holy Spirit. That means he's with you. Let's pray. I have a prayer partner that goes on walks with me and he prays with me. In fact, I say, Holy Spirit, let's pray together. 
I just follow you and lead, Holy Spirit, because they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So I'm going to follow his lead, even in prayer. And he begins to bring this up. Pray for that. Pray for this. Release your faith for that and what have you, as I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? So I've been praying in the Spirit about this. And what began to happen was several months after that whole, after even now, this is after Brother Jerry began to prophesy about maximum and highest level attainable. I was praying about all this. I said, Lord, how do you transfer that that you showed me? I literally saw God, God, transfer something in my account. And all I did was I had no excitement, excitement about it. Like, because you're like, wow. No, it wasn't anything like that. I just had a soberness about it. I turned around. I saw my, some of my leaders with me. I said, okay, guys, we got it. Let's get the job done. That's what I said to the, in the dream. And I, you know, and I didn't see the person that I knew it was God. I didn't see the person. And here's the thing, one key. If you, in your dream, see somebody do something for you or say something to you, but you can't see him, that's the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. He's your unseen friend. Hallelujah. So the more intimate you become to him, he'll show you of things to come. Are you with me? So I said, Lord, now what you showed me, how do I transfer that from the unseen into the seen? And I'll never forget what he said to me. He says, first of all, it's not too late. Now, it's not like I'm, I'm not spazzing about the time when I asked him that. I just wanted to know, how do you do this? I depend on you to do this, right? How do I do this, Holy Spirit? He says, first of all, it's not too late. And that's all he said. So I kept praying in the Holy Ghost for two more days. And the next thing that the Lord says to me, this is really interesting, right here. Let me bring my notes here. He says, he said this to me two days later. He says, don't let time push you. And I'm thinking... What does time have to do with what we're talking about here? Are you with me? And as, as I begin to press in in the spirit, I'm challenging you to really lay hold of something that the spirit of God is trying to speak to us right now, to the body of Christ. Okay. And really, honestly, I can say this. The only other person I'm hearing talk about this stuff is Bill Winston. If you're following Bill Winston, Pastor Bill, Bill Winston, Dr. Bill Wilson, he's talking about... The time and all that stuff. And what's amazing is he began to share with me. And then like three days later, I turned the uh, Victory Channel on. And there he's preaching, right? And he's saying practically the same things. I said, oh my God, we're on track. Yeah, Are you with me? Amen. I want you to see that something. God didn't create time to rule over us. Would you get that? He didn't create time to rule over us. We have authority over time. You all remember the fourth day in Genesis. That's when he created the stars, the, the sun and the moon. That's actually what that is. If you notice, so you can measure the seasons, he says there. Chapter 1, verse 14. Okay? Fourth day. He says, so we can measure time. And then verse 26, he created us and he says he gave us authority over the earth, over everything on the earth. Time is in the earth. Are you with me? That means you and I have authority over time. Just like we have authority over sickness, just like we have authority over anything else on the planet, anything that happens on this earth. Time is an equation on the planet, so we can measure the seasons, what have you. But you know what's interesting about this is that what the Lord began to show me is, he says, time can be your greatest enemy or your greatest blessing. But you decide, okay? I like to say this, but the way he said it was, or your greatest servant. Are you with me? Now I see the gears turning right now. Because what I'm trying to do is this. When you understand you have authority over time, you have to disengage here and engage in here because anything that happens in here is in 
time, which relates to your five physical senses. Or you can say it has to do with the natural. But if you want to operate in the supernatural, okay, you have to step over into the other. What I love what Dr. Bill Winston talks about, fourth dimension. Yes. Glory to God. I love that. He calls it fourth dimension. Are you with me? But I tell you, the maximum, the highest level attainable, the seven years of superabundance is in the fourth dimension. Yes. And you have to know how to access it on purpose. Yes. On purpose. Yes. Not hoping. A, it's not, we can't just like roll a dice, hopefully it'll work. No, you can on purpose access it. Okay. And the way the Lord said it to me was, make time your servant and not your master. Are you with me? And the Lord continued saying these, I'm, I'm just writing these things down. He says, on earth, everything natural is capsulated in time and measured by time. And there is a purpose for time. It is to measure the natural or what happens on the earth. Okay. And of course, I shared that scripture with you. Genesis 1, 14 and through 19. He, he gave us time to measure seasons. But a lot of times what, what's happened is, we, what we've done is, we put time ahead of faith. Every time we say, I'm going to get that. I'm believing for that. That means you're not convinced yet that you have it. Because what you have, what God speaks to you is. What God speaks to us, that seven years of super abundance is. Now, whether you receive it or not, it's up to you. Because God said, next seven years will be seven years of super abundance. Where for every seed planted... The land, the earth is going. And I like to say it this way. Other translations, the, the earth or the ground gave forth by handfuls or abundantly. Now let me give you an example of this. I was ministering back in, this is a few years back in 2007, 2008. Uh, for a church here in town called New Beginnings International. Pastor Don Beautiful man of God. What a wonderful. He just recently went on to be with the Lord. And, um, and I was ministering. And after the, you know, I was doing the five days for them. Uh, started Sunday morning, Sunday night, all the way through Thursday. And uh, on Sunday night, he, I just finished up, turned, you know, turned the service back to him. And he gets up and he says, he's from that old school Pentecost. You know, talks like this. You know, this growly voice and all that. And uh, he says, this, this message has been really good. You know, it's really just challenging us. And then he starts to receive an offering. And he says this. He says, now, we just paid the staff this past Friday. And there's nothing left in the bank account. <laughs> That's a way to receive an offering for you, you know. <laughs> I, didn't, I just, you know. But this is the amazing thing. He says, now... And then the mortgage payment on the church is due next Friday. So go ahead and give. <laughs> and I'm thinking, after all this that I preached, you know. So what happened was this, and uh, boom, the Spirit of God dropped something in my spirit. Right? And I, I, I had a word. Word of wisdom in my spirit. And the gift of faith. Both of them coupled together showed up. I mean, I know when the gift of faith comes in. In fact, it's operating right now. I'm telling you. And the gift of faith is when it comes on you, it is for you to receive a miracle. Yes. yes. Because it's beyond you. I want you to get this. Whatever your miracle that you're looking for tonight, right now, the, the gift of faith is in operation. I'm telling you. I know when it comes. I sense it. I know it. Okay. So that's what happened that night. So what happened was, I said, I have, can I share something, Pastor Don? He says, absolutely, come up here, brother. I said, I just heard the Lord say, don't believe for a payment, believe for the payment. Amen. And he looks at me like I'm from another planet. Yeah. And I don't know what they owe on the place. And he says, Brother Cameron, go ahead. 
you pray. <laughs> yeah, you know, he hands me the mic back. I said, well, Lord Jesus, do what you just said. That's all I said. Seriously. I didn't feel anything extra special. I said, do what he said. Next night, Monday night, I show up, but then half hour early, 45 minutes early before the service, Connie, his wife, is waiting at the door with a grin from ear to ear on her face. Are you with me? She says, Pastor Don wants to see you. And I noticed that. I said, oh, the blessing is on. <laughs> I heard that. I knew it in my spirit, you know. So I walk in, and he's sitting behind his desk with his feet propped up on his desk, hand behind his head. He says, come on in, Brother Cameron, and read this. And just like 30 minutes before I showed up, he had just got an email, and that right there. And he had printed it off from the real estate company that represented the largest, get this, oil company in America. Wow. Offering them $915,000 for seven acres of land that they had on their property that they weren't even using in a foreign corner. I would read that. I turned around. I said, Pastor Don, the blessing is on. And I know you're under pressure. But there's money left on the table. Don't just succumb to this there. Hand it back to him. And I, okay. Now, what's interesting is that the night before when I was ministering, one of the things I said to them, I gave this example. I said, what you need is already in the earth. Are you with me? And I had given them an example that I was flying somewhere. And I like to always, you know, when I fly, I like to sit aisle. But they put me on the window. So I'm sitting on the wing. Right, this is a 767. It's a big wing. And I'm looking out the door. And I know this. But it just like, you know when you have an aha moment? One of those aha moments. I'm sitting there looking out the window. And this massive wing. And all of a sudden I had this one of these aha moments that this whole, everything about this airplane came out of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So I shared that story with them that night. In, in relation to what I was ministering. That what you need is on the earth. Are you with me? You're just going to have to believe the blessing. That makes you rich. And has no sorrow with it. Praise God. Because we serve a too much God. Are you with me? He, we serve a too much God. Are you with me? Now. He turns around, calls me. I, I went out, I went on from there. 60 days later, he calls me. Brother Cameron, sign, it's signed, sealed, and delivered. Delivered. I said, what is it? What happened? He says, they gave me $1,475,000 bonus. We didn't even sell the land. That they, in fact, we leased them 10 acres, he said. We leased it to them, okay? And they told me that there's 30 years of gas. Natural gas under, like a reservoir under their church. Okay. And then for every drill head that they put on my, in each acre, and each acre holds 12 drill heads, can hold 12 drill heads. For each drill head, they give, they'll give $2,500 a month. Figured out how much that is. I mean, they went from nothing to super abundance. All because... Of what God said. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. I'm here to tell you. Don't leave money on the table. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey brother. Good to see you. Tim right? Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Are you all with me? Yes. God has this super abundance. Reserved for us. But we have to reap it. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I think we just succumb to, well, as long as my you know, mortgage payment is paid. Let's bring God glory. Yes. Are you with me? I heard someone say, you got to have some, if, you know, some people say, don't, you know, you got to give all the glory to God. And someone says, well, you got to have some glory to give him. <laughs> Are you with me? Glory to God. But I want you to catch this. The Lord said over here that for every seed sown, 
the land, the earth, the ground gave an abundant harvest. Superb. For every seed sown. Amen? Praise God. To the point that they couldn't measure it. I'm, I'm letting that sink in. A life without measure. I was in Montana. Listen, don't let this cool looking outfit fool you. I am a cowboy. <laughs> I was in Montana. I've got a church, a minister to their partners with the ministry. They are cowboys. They're like third generation Montanans. Okay. And they have a thousand acre ranch. And they have a church on the ranch. And they're, they, uh, uh, they're pastors of the church too. It's a working ranch, right? So I minister for them. And he took me out horseback riding. I'll tell you what. We got to where no, the truck couldn't go anymore. Then we unloaded the horses and we took it for six, six miles out, six miles back. When I, when I got back, I, I was walking like this. I was, my butt was so sore. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was sore. But he said, I tell you, there was, I was right behind him. But you look down, there's 150 feet drop to the river. Where we're going in the mountain, we're in the, I mean, wilderness. This is real, like things happen in the wilderness. I mean, crazy stuff. Are you with me? So we're out there, and then the next day we come back, and he says, You know, Cameron, I was checking you out. You actually did pretty good. And then we went out for next day, you know, during the day, we went rounding cattle on horse. It was so fun, all that. Now, I want, there's a point I'm making. When we were going up to go riding, I noticed. All these chunks of rocks on the mountain. I told Jim, I said, Jim, did they like use dynamite to blow out? He says, no, those are all natural. I said, man, that's a lot of rock. He says, that's why they call it Rocky Mountains. I said, that's too much rocks. And then he dawned on me. I said, God just doesn't do things little. There were so much rocks. He just can't help himself to give you too much rocks. Are you with me? That's just his nature. Too much. Super abundance. Glory to God. So when I began to press into this about what I had seen in the, in the dream. Hallelujah. There was a few things that the Lord said to me was this. He says, Revelation, it get this, you know, in relation to like Genesis 1, 3, when he says, let there be light and there was light. Really what that's, what God said was, let there be a revelation of me on the earth. And then that came. And then in verse 14, he created time. And the Lord said this. He said this to me. He says, first there was revelation. Then came time. It's always in that order. It's always in that order. Are you with me? And it's this. Revelation is what gets you into the fourth dimension. Or into, let me put it this way. Revelation knowledge is what gets you out of time. And gives you authority over time. So if God, and the way the Lord said it to me was this. He says, Cameron. Unless, when I speak to you, unless I tie time to it, unless I give you a word that has got time in it, unless it's that way, if it doesn't have that, it's always for you right now. And then he gave me an example. I remember sitting in my office. I just shared this with Brother Jerry this past um, leadership well, vision meeting that we had here uh, back in April. And... Uh, we were just talking, and we had a great time. And, and I said, you know, Brother Jerry, one day I was sitting in my office, really frustrated. You know, the devil was doing a work on me. I was young in the Lord. You know, I'm, I'm way over my head in what I was doing. I'm being real. Okay? And I'm just sitting there. I was talking to Brother Jerry about it. And I'm just like, really, just, he's working on my head, trying to discourage me that you're never going to do what you're here for, and this and that. And I had just got a Fortune magazine. And I just, you know, I hadn't even looked at it. I just started flipping through. I'm, I'm praying in the spirit. And I'm just flip, trying to kind of clear my head. And I see a picture of a jet. I don't even know what this jet is. And I read in the corner, it says, this falcon, 
This is before Brother Jerry talked about a falcon. He says, this Falcon 900 EX will whisk you from Frankfurt to Chicago nonstop in less than 11 hours. And the Lord said to me, he says, they'll come. At I heard Brother Jerry in my spirit. I heard his voice. In my They'll come at time. You know the story he's talking about, Willie, and airplanes and all that? And he, I heard Brother Jerry, I told him that. I said, I heard his voice in my spirit saying, there'll come a time in your ministry that you'll need one of these for you to fulfill your calling. And do we ever, especially with now crazy stuff that goes on on the airlines. Okay, now I say that. So he, he said that, and I'm thinking, the Lord reminded me. He says, you know, Cameron, when I remember in 97, that was in 1997, early at 97. He says, when I showed you that, he says, uh-huh. He says, remember I said, there'll come a time. That's for the future. But I gave you heads up. Give you a vision of what to press for. He says, other than that, when I give you a word, it's for right now. The key is knowing how to step outside of time and take it hold of it and get it down here. Are you with me? Yes. Glory to God. Is that challenging you? I hope so. I'll tell you what, it challenged me. I've been meditating on these things that the Lord spoke to me for months and months and months. The Lord said this to me. He says, revelation trumps time. And revelation, the only way you get revelation is when you meditate and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's a relationship. It's not like, I'm going to do this to get this. That's a wrong attitude toward the whole thing. No, you just, most everything the Lord has said to me was when I was just Chill in his presence, loving on him. I get up in the morning. Uh, first thing that always comes out of my mouth, Lord, thank you. Praise God for you. Amen. And next thing you know, that's when he began to speak to me about these things. Amen. Glory to God. The Lord said this in the spirit or in the eternal, timeless, time, uh, timeless dimension. Time is not a factor. There's no time in the spirit. And they said this, and as I said it earlier, everything is. So what the thing that God has spoken to you is. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is. Your miracle, your healing is. A lot of times people, people says, yeah, I'm asking the Lord to heal me. You're asking a mess. There's no faith in that. I'm asking, I'm believing God for my healing. 2,000 years ago, and that's, I tell you, I know, I know this. When you're hurting, I realize, you know, I'm not belittling that. Okay. But if you really get a hold of the fact that your healing, your miracle, your health is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Say everything is. Superabundance is. Super Not will be, is. is. I mean, he just simply, I said, next seven years. Glory. That means today's one part of the seven years, right? Yes. Next one, and the next day, and then I'm telling you what, every day. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. And I know in this church, we're taught to sow. And we're taught to reap. Are you with me? So we qualify. The only thing is this. Now I'm going to share something. We were, we were having a meeting. And, um, and during the worship, we're just worshiping. And the Spirit of God says, tell everybody, don't. And I love that tonight. Because I could see the engagement of everybody in this place in worship. And I can see it also in how you're engaging the word right now. The spirit of God and the word right now, right? But what the Lord said to me, he says, tell everyone to press into his presence and engage him. And don't let, you know, because we have a tendency in church because we show up on Wednesday nights. We go to church Sunday morning. If you have Sunday night services, Sunday night or Saturday night, it becomes a routine that you can actually do that in automatic and never engage the Spirit of God. Show up, but you're not here. 
with me? And the Lord told me, he says, tell everyone to engage my presence on purpose where your spirit, your soul, and your body is engaged. Your emotions are engaged with my presence. He says, and they'll get what that's living in the now right now. Because he's always right now. He's eternal. So, but that's your choice. It's not a feeling. You make a choice. You know. You all know when there's worship going on. When you walk in there. At, at first, you know, sometimes, you know, you're just like looking around. And all that. Next thing you know, the worship touches you. And you engage. Yeah. And you know, you are connected with God's presence. Yeah. And he's connected with you. And that's where you get answers. That's when revelation flows. In fact, I get most of my revelations, honestly, when I'm at peace or during worship. Are you with me? Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord said this. He says, faith works outside of sense knowledge. Okay. Time deals with sense knowledge. Your five physical senses. And we have authority over time. It's not that we, don't, we shouldn't have five physical senses. But you got to know the purpose of everything. You know, your feelings are not given to you to make decisions by. Your mind is. Okay? A lot of people make decisions based on feelings and they get themselves in trouble. And then they call me and say, Pastor Pray. Are you with me? When your faith is in time, now this is powerful right here, get this. It says when your faith is in time and focused on time, you become limited to time. Are you with me? You become limited to time and you move away from the spirit dimension. You move away from fourth dimension. Amen. The supernatural. Because you're operating, you're tying time to everything. Even when you say, God, would you do it? Like, I, I really like to get it, uh, you know, like you're begging God to do this for you. He says, that's not faith. I've done it for you. Are you with me? I know you're with me. I keep saying, are you with me? Because that's just the way I preach. <laughs> Glory to God. Eternal is limitless. Say everything is. Everything is. I see some of your faces that the, when I look at you, I know the gears are turning. I'm telling you, you're being challenged. On, there's something, man, I got to tap into this. Mm-hmm. Are you with me? Yes. I know you're with me. <laughs> I like to say this. Everything is in the eternal. Yeah. Okay, everything. Now watch this. Um, I read this out of the Passion Translation. 2 Peter 1 3. Everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been, or, say already. already. Already been deposited in us. Yes. Yes. The seven years of abundance, when God spoke it and you took it and it became that seed in you, it's been given, it's in us. Yes. Angela and I were talking, laying by the pool, just preaching to each other. Just a month ago or so. And she said something that I'm just listening. She said, are you listening to me? I said, absolutely. I'm just quiet. When, I'm, when, when it's talking to me, I'm listening. And then two days later, I said, you know, babe, that what you shared to me, just, it's so powerful. You know? It's in us. Get this. And we need to manifest it by what we say. We can't ask God to do it. Because he's already done it. He says everything we could ever need for life. That's life meaning like your everything in life. Natural life, right? And godliness in the spiritual life. Okay. Has been given, has been deposited in us by his divine power. It's in us. Say the maximum is in me. So if it's in you, all you got to do is bring it out of you. Amen. You bring it out of you. 
Okay? How do you bring it out of you? You meditate on it enough that it gets bigger than your outside. And it comes out of you, trust me. The key is this, what I recognize, I say this, before we came to Christ, we needed, the most important thing we needed was Jesus. Salvation. But after we come to Christ, the most important thing we need for the rest of our life until we see Jesus face to face in heaven is meditation. Renewing of our mind. So our mind doesn't limit our spirit. Because your spirit is limitless. Let me tell you how limitless your spirit is. In Isaiah, God says, I measured the all creation basically. The ocean and the mountains, everything, creation, what he created in the palm of his hand from, from here to here. Think about entire universe fits in his hand, right? Yet this God that everything fits in his hand fits in your spirit. Uh, you didn't get a part of him. You got the whole thing, the whole person. Now think about how great is your spirit capacity. That's why I'm saying don't, measure, don't limit yourself and don't limit God. That's why renewal of the mind to these truths are so important. The more, I mean, every night I go to bed, I thank God, and I just begin to meditate on seven years of plenty. Next seven years. Every day, the next seven years is my seven years of super abundance. Imagine what that would look like for you. Imagine what you could do with that. Are you with me? Glory to God. I'm excited about this. Hallelujah. You know, we often say God created everything out of nothing. Have you heard that before? But God didn't create things out of nothing. He created everything from his word. And we are created in his image. Right? We know all this. But how much are we engaging all this on a daily basis? Amen? Glory to God. So focus your faith on the supernatural. On the word. On the spirit. On the eternal. He said my words are spirit and they are life. Amen. Your mind is what keeps your faith in the natural. Let me ask you something. Does it make any sense when you hear from God? Go forward Moses. Put your staff in the the middle of the Red Sea. Right under water. And it'll open up. He he didn't even say it'll open up. Just go and put your staff in it and it opened up. Does that make any natural sense? Nothing in the Bible makes sense. Are you with me? There's nothing in the Bible that makes sense. So quit trying to make sense out of it. Start believing it. Glory to Jesus. I tell you, I can go on, but, you know, let's see. Quickly, because I want to pray for everybody here. Glory to God. So your mind is what keeps your faith in the natural. And as long as your faith is on the natural, it will not produce supernatural. In the natural. Okay? And then he told me this. You know, I asked the Lord, Lord, how do I transfer that, what you showed me? And it was so, it's more real than I'm looking at you. What I saw was more real than looking at you, my brother. It was that real, what you showed me. I mean, I know I have it. My, my talking has gone from, I'm going to get it to, I have it. And I just thank you, Father God. And I decree it into my account. Or I decree, you know what I'm talking about here. Okay, now watch this. The Lord said this, you transfer, listen to this, you transfer it with your faith. 
I want you to look at faith differently. I'm not saying that what we've known is not right, but I want you to see faith as your superpower. That when you decree a thing, you'll have it. Not you will have it, you have it. To the degree that you believe you have it, you'll have it. That's why meditation is so vital. So it goes from future into now. Until it drops in your spirit and explodes. When it explodes, it's yours. If you just don't quit. If you don't, after three days, decide, well, I guess I'm going to get it again. You go back to your old confession. Uh Uh-uh. No, no, no. I have a covenant right. And the process is what I'm talking to you about. He said, you transfer it with your faith in the word that I have spoken to you. See, all of us have received words from God directly for our specific needs. He says, and you speak it, you, you transfer it with your mouth and the authority in my name. The name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Every knee will bow. I don't know if we have really got a hold of the power of the name of Jesus, Brother Danny. You know? And then he said this. And I I pretty much wrap it up with this. And then I'm going to talk to you about one other thing here. The Lord said, you have to become. This went off in me so loud. I know this, but it exploded in me. And I pray, Holy Spirit, cause this to explode in every heart here and those that are watching. Those that will watch in the future even. Glory to God. He said this. You have to become absolutely and completely convinced and fully persuaded that my kingdom works by my spoken words Spoken to you and not, it's not dependent on time. The key is this. He added this. It's not dependent on time. That not dependent on time, you got to meditate on until you completely uproot any thought that you have had in your subconscious level, in your heart of hearts, that still sticks his ugly head out and wants to tie time to what God has spoken to you. When God says, it's yours, it's already yours, it's in you, just manifest it, decree it, believe that it's yours, and it'll show up in your life, and expect it to show up right now. You with me? Hallelujah. Now, I'm I'm sharing this, as you notice, I'm very convinced (laughs) about what I'm talking about here. Are you with me? And... uh, Years ago, as Pastor Annette mentioned this to me, to, to, about us, um, she mentioned that, you know, we're on TV and this and that, television. But the Lord gave me an assignment back in 2001 when he spoke to me, three weeks before September 11th. I was in California. I'm sitting, I had just preached for this Iran, first Iranian church I preached for in California. First time I ever preached in a church, Iranian church. I'd go and preach for American churches and this and that here and there on that first time. So, I mean, my Farsi was, I could talk, but I couldn't preach. So, like, when the pastor is talking to me, I said, what does that mean? Tell me in English what that is. He was talking Christianese to me, you know. And so I had preached, and then I go back to my sister's house, and I'm turning the TV on, and the Lord says to me, I, I flipped the channel, and it comes to an Iranian channel. Now, you got to understand, I've been here in America since 1978, 45 years. I know I don't look 45. <laughs> I don't even look 60. <laughs> you with me. But, uh, but I didn't know there was Iranian channels. In California, the largest population of Iranians in the world after Iran live in California. Two million people. 1.2 million in Southern California. So, 
Lord says, I, I flip through the channel. I see this network preaching. I'm talking. In, I mean, just it's an entertainment network. He says, get on that channel and preach the gospel to Iran. And I turned around. I said, can I? This is where I was. Can I? You with me? Yeah. Now, let's fast forward 20 years later. Actually, it took two years for us to go from can I to doing it. Mm-hmm. I had to meditate. Don't know nothing about TV, but I did have a telephone. I picked up the phone. I started making calls and start digging around and finding out what's going on and this and that. Right? But the Lord spoke to me in 01, August of 01. He says, I want you to get on that TV, that network, preach the gospel to Iran in Farsi. And I told him what I said. And then he says, get on there weekly, once a week. And then after that, I want you to get on daily. And then after that, I want you to build me a 24-7 network. I said, (laughs) what? Because I used to make fun of TV preachers. In fact, I got saved watching Benny Hinn. I didn't know who he was. Flip the channel on this man is blowing on people and throwing his jacket at people. And people are falling out and getting healed and all that stuff. And I'm saying, who is this? That's how I got, gave my life to the Lord, right? And I had an experience with God in my living room where Jesus showed up, right? So before that, I used to make fun. Of TV preachers. And now fast forward. This is in 1991. Fast forward to 2001. 10 years later. He says this is what I want you to do. I said what? Okay. So by the grace of God and his favor. God began to open doors. And began to. You know in fact I know Pastor Justin is right now with Pastor Rodney Howard Brown. He went out and flew out to Rodney, Rodney's church. Pastor Rodney's church. But Pastor Rodney when he heard. What I was do- going to do, I'd mention, he says, what are you doing? I hadn't seen him for a few days. He was good friends. And he says, he says uh, I said to him what we're doing. He says, do you have any TV equipment? I said, no. He says, do you have any help? I said, no. He said, you come to my church. You're going to preach. I'm going to give you my TV crew. They're going to record you and give you the finished product. <laughs> so I went there for two weeks and preached my first season of programs. Praise God for Pastor Rodney and Adonica. <laughs> Glory to God. And he says, I want to sow seed into Iran. Wow. Right? That was the beginning. In 2003, we began to air weekly. That was our lion. You know, David took down the lion, and then he took the bear down, and then comes the uncircumcised Philistine. Yeah. <laughs> All right? So we did the lion. I'll tell you what. We took that lion down. I mean, we, two years, it took two years, but God op- truly opened the door supernatural everything about my life is supernatural i'll tell you this since i came to christ because i believe that see when i saw that man with his fufu hair and blowing on people and all that i said is this real i was offended a little bit honestly you know i said is this for real i, I, I want to see here's what i want to tell you something in every man's heart, I've discovered this later, I can put words to it. In every man's heart, there's a cry for the supernatural. Because we were created by a supernatural father. Our nature is supernatural. The devil wants to squeeze you into the natural. So you won't have any power over him. And he'll have power over you. But that cry in our spirit for the supernatural is real. Every single one of you have that. You with me? So that's what was happening in me. So I was, I said, God, if that's real, make it real to me. And I never forget. As soon as I said that, if these miracles are real, make it real to me. And the program ends. He's back in his studio and he points at that camera just like this. And he says, there's a young man watching me. And you just told the Lord, ask the Lord if these miracles are real to make it real to you. I mean, he verbatim quoted me. My hair was standing straight. He says, well, the Lord's going to reveal that to you. He's going to show you that. And now you people at home, we're going to take communion here in the studio. I didn't even know what communion was. I had taken it a couple times in church. I didn't know the meaning of it. But everything began with the communion. 
When I took, I mean, I ran to my fridge. I had been going to church for four months at that time with this friend of mine. They didn't even know. I mean, I was just going for his niece's sake. He had a cute niece. I'm serious. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I, 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 did, I did go there. Uh, but, so, but I hadn't committed, right? So, so we had taken communion a couple times during that church during the four months, a few times that I remember. And, but I don't know what it means. You, I know you eat some cracker and you take these little cups and drink it. So, I mean, I run to my fridge and I pour me a big glass of juice. <laughs> and I, you know, grab a half a loaf of bread. I mean, I had some French bread. I took half of it. I come over there in front of the TV. God is my witness, y'all. When I put that bread in my mouth, the glory of the Lord showed up in my living room. Yes. And the Spirit of God began to speak to me. I was so, I mean, the atmosphere changed. The atmosphere was charged with the presence of God right there. Just like it is right now as you sense the presence of God. Every time I revisit it, he shows up. Glory to God. And he showed up. He says, Cameron, not only those miracles are real, but I've called you. That's what he, I said, called me. Called me. What, what does that mean? To take my saving and my miracle working power to your generation. And to your people. The moment said to your people, I said, I'm not dealing with those Muslims. Forget that. I know those Muslims. You don't know those Muslims. I know that. They're, no, no. I'm sick. God is my witness. I'm not. A, I said that to God. He says, the Lord said to me, he says, Cameron, I created them. They don't know me. That's why I'm sending you so you can make me known to them. And from that day on, the fire of God touched me. Everything changed. For 32 years, I've been running with that fire all over the world. Yeah. And then when the Lord shows up to me, and he said, get on that television and preach the gospel, tells me that. I'm like, everything, I'm like, how am I going to do this? I couldn't even get out of town. Somebody said to me, he says, we couldn't stay in town. What are you talking about, get out of town? I mean, didn't have any money to get out of town, barely. We couldn't just stay home. It was, that's where we started. Mm -hmm. Okay? But God, just one after another. Now, I'm going to say this. He gave me three steps. He says, first, weekly, then daily, then 24-7 network. Well, we've killed the lion already in 03. Then in 06, we killed the bear. And that was a bear, I'm telling you. Are you with me? And then, as soon as we did, we went on daily. He says, now I want you to prepare for 24-7 network. I said, God, give me a break. Let me breathe. <laughs> okay? And so, as I began to prepare and just pray, we went through some challenges. I went through a horrific... I mean, we moved to California to do some things. I went through the most darkest hour of my life. See, this is where, when you are established in what I've been preaching to you, the darkest times, even though they're painful and they're hard and they're just tearing your heart apart and all that stuff, when you're grounded in the Word and in the Spirit, you'll pop right back up like a beach ball. Yes. Amen? But we went through this tough time and God restored. Amen? And then the Lord began to, I, mean, I remember I was so disoriented with what I had gone through sitting at Brother Copeland's minister's conference in 2018. I'm saying, God, what do you want from me? disoriented completely lost hope and everything like seemed like it had lost hope he says he spoke to me he says i haven't changed anything that i told you to do get up and build me that 24 7 network and god began to boom 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 open the doors and everything like that so we're this close of launching this 24 7 network if you have that second video if you don't mind i want you to look at this i want you to see what this is all about We've been working on this for some time, but we're almost there. So we're, we're mirroring Victory Channel, and we've been in contact with Brother Copeland's ministry. Watch this. چطور ایمان تبدیل به عادت روزمره در زندگی شما می شود؟ همین امروز به کلاس های کنید کاپلند در کالج جدید کنید کاپلند را پیوندید و همانند یک دانش آموز اصول اساسی ایمان را بیاموزید.
خوش اومد میگم به بینندگان محترم شبکه پیروزی من میزبان شما هستم شبان کامران کریمی جایی نرید توجهتون رو جلب کنید به برگر کنید کپلان من برمیگردم برای شما در دعا باشم ایسا گرست نشد از دور نظر بر درخت انجیری انداخت که پربه نزدیک بدان امید که چیزی در آن بیابد تا بخورد چون آمد چیزی جز برگ ندید چرا که فصل انجیر دادن نبود ایسا درخت را خطاب قرار داده و گفت زین پس تا عبد کس از میوه از نخورد چاگردان شنیدند پس به طور کامل تا زمانی که سرریز بشه زندگی بهتر از آنچه تصور میکرد حالا به ترجمه دیگه ای نگاه میکنم آمده هم تا همه چیز را به فراوانی به شما بدم همه چیز به فراوانی ایش از آنچه انتظار داری زندگی در کمال رو. این حد اکثر بیایید دوباره بخونیم آمده هم تا همه چیز را به فراوانی به شما بدم حیاتی فراوانتر از آنچه انتظار داری یا بیشتر از آنچه انتظار داری و زندگی در کمال هم. این حد دکسر کلمه پایداری یونانی هوپامینوی سربازانی رو تعریف میکنه که باید منطقه تصرف کردهشون رو حفاظت کرده و یه سانتش رو از دست نمیدادن و حالا نویسنده ابرانی هم به جایی که میگه ایمانتون رو دور بندازید این زمانی که نقشه و نظرتون رو عوض نکنید و بگید این جایگاه منه و خدا به من وعده ای داده و من از اون حرکت نمی کنم مهم نیست چقدر طول مهم نیست که چقدر سخت باشه چقدر سنگین باشه من اون تصمیمم رو گرفتم و هیچ جنبش اینجا کلید اینه و از شما میخواد خوب بوش بدید یاد بگیرید و فرایندی رو بپذیرید که وقتی کسی چشش روی شما نیست تحت فشار بذارید و موفقیت های رو به دست بیارید چون به هر حال برای کی دارید این کار را انجام میدید یادم یاد سالها پیش فیلمی در این باره ضبط کردم چطور از نظر علمی ثابت شده که به دیگران چیزی گفتن مثل اعلان پرسر و صدای از ایده های بزرگی که دارید این در حقیقت باعث از بین رفتن انگیزتون میشه Are you with me? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? That young lady, her name is Sarah, who's doing the voice for Terry. She is like, she's so fired up. She, I call her Minnie Mouse. And I tell her all the Terry stories and everything like that, you know, what have you. And just to see what God is doing with Terry, it just blesses me. And so we've got, to, for the first year, we have chosen 12 of the programmers from Victory Channel. You know, to dub, they're going to be having one program per week that's going to air multiple times throughout the week. So there's 12 programmers are kind of smorgasbord all throughout the week and all that. Plus, of course, we'll have our own preaching and church services live and what have you. But then, uh, so there's 52 programs, okay, per programmer for a whole year. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to partner with us, at least pray about partnering with us. Amen. And, um, and the way it is, the way I, I basically crunched it down is this. There's 8,866 8, hours per year. Okay? That equates to 17,532 half hour shows. 17,532 hourly or half hour shows. Okay? And what we've done is simply crunch down to what it takes to get this thing done. And it costs basically turnkey from the dubbing to the airtime to all the follow-up and everything that goes along with a network. And I tell you what, a network is, <laughs> it's taken us from 06 till now to prepare and get ready for this. I mean, and when the Lord spoke to me about this, like I said, we couldn't, I mean, what? 24-7 network? You know? But we're there. We're this close. Okay, we're dubbing programs, and the way the Lord said it to me, he says, get one year of programs dubbed first. That's 624 half-hour shows that will be aired 17,532 times in one year. Don't you think, in fact, this is what the Lord said to me. He said, he says, the word of faith will eradicate the effects of Islam out of your nation's mind. Out of the people's mind. 
And this is now what I love about victory, and I want to have Angela share a testimony quickly, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, what I love about Victory Channel is because there is no compromise in teachings on that. Now, everybody that's on there is word of faith. There's no smorgasbord of all kind of different things that come and speak against each other. Not, not that I, they're doing it intentionally, but that's just, they're going up to where they believe, okay? But when you have everybody believing the same thing, and that same voice is coming forth in multiple, in different spices, if I can say. I mean, Rick Renner is definitely different than Brother Jerry. And definitely than Terry, <laughs> as far as that goes. But when you put them all together, and you get that message there, people will connect to different, what I call different personalities. Amen? Our goal is to launch this. As soon as we have one year of program recorded, or dubbed, I should say. And my intention has always been this, to do it with excellence, like we, we are doing it here. I don't want to, you know, subtitle it, any of, that, any of that stuff. I want people to connect with the anointing that's on the ministers. Because these ministers are what changed my life. What I am, I always said this, I know there are millions of Camerons out in Iran, in Afghanistan, and in Tajikistan. There's 120 million, you know, Farsi-speaking Muslims in the world. I know there's millions of Camerons. If they hear what Cameron heard and experience what I experienced, they'll give their life to Christ. Amen? And I've received from all these and more, if you will, that we saw. And, uh, and I'm just simply asking you that if the Lord would provide for it through you, would you consider partnering with us? And if you do, we have some of these cards. You know, we got these two cards here, and the big one and the little one, okay? The little one is uh, basically a partnership card. You can fill out your information, and we'll be in touch with you as far as that goes. And this other one, you can keep. You can fill this out and give it to us, and then you can keep this one. It shows you the w different ways to give and our thanks to you, but use this as a point of contact to pray for us. I tell you what, when we have come to its, this, like we're at the tipping point, the whole hell tried to break loose against us. I mean, I was in the worst car accident last week that the enemy tried to take us out. I'm not kidding you. The, the enemy tried to take me and my wife out. But to hell with the devil. I'm here. Yeah. Glory to God. Are you with me? There's power in the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen? And I would covet, I mean, if I tell you, more than anything, I covet your prayers. Because to do this, it's a, it's a huge undertaking, and it takes a lot of grace, a lot of wisdom. In fact, I remember like 20 years ago, the Lord said this to me. He says, Cameron, if you flow in my wisdom, if you seek my wisdom, I'll show you how to do this, and your nation could become the first Christian nation in the Middle East. Now, think, can you imagine... The, the state, the nation that is known as a terrorist nation for the past 44 years, becoming a Christian nation. We will solve the Israel problem right there. Talk about peace treaty. But you think, I'm kidding, but that is the truth. I'm believing for that. That's a supernatural expectation. Amen? And... Operating in what we're talking about, I mean, not only the seven years of abundance, but operating to override time yeah. to what we shared about is what it's going to take to make this thing work in the name of Jesus Christ. So if you would like to receive one of these cards in the, uh, in the back, it just tells you, you know, where you can, what you, just your information and all that, and you see that. We broke it down for you. If you can, the whole budget of it is $2.1 million. So if somebody over here wants to just write $2.1 million check, we'll take it, no problem. In fact, I told Justin, when he asked me, he said, send me the information about your ministry so we can have a check ready for you. I said, okay, I'll do that. And then I said, by the way, million has six, uh, nine zeros next to it. I told him that, you know. So he starts laughing. Six zeros or nine zeros, did I say? Six zeros, sorry. So anyway, I know we texted him. He kind of grinned and all that stuff. But I appreciate your time. Now I want to pray for you. Make sure you hand those out. Also, one last thing before that. I've got my book, In Allah They Trust. You know how in God we trust? 
You know Allah is not the same God we serve. Amen. Are you with me? And this book is a very powerful book. I remember the Lord, when I was on staff here, the Lord began to give me the understanding of this book, what I've got in here, that you have to be able to separate between Muslims and Islam. Okay, you have to. You got to understand the difference in the two. And I go thoroughly in here about some things there that, you know, when you begin to do it, this is a handbook of how to reach Muslims in a very practical way. And it's by the Spirit of God, okay? It's proven. We're seeing it happen. The fastest growing church in the world is taking place right now in Iran. Did you know that? Fastest growing church is happening there. All because we've been preaching. Not, I'm not the only one who's doing that. There's a handful of us that are crazy enough to preach into that nation. And uh, we're under blacklist, by the way. Somebody told me, Cameron, can you go to Iran? I said, oh, yeah. I may not come back, but I can go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I can go as far as that goes. So, but I'm believing for the day that we can go. Yes. Can I tell you one, other, one quick story? And I'll, I'll wrap it up with this, and I'm going to pray for you. I was talking to, about these things that I shared with you with our team. Our churches, we have multiple house churches. You know, We're shooting for 1,000 house churches in Iran. Amen. These are house churches. Each house church could be anywhere from three people to 100 people. As far as that goes. They meet in their homes. So, um, so what happened was this. I was talking to him about the supernatural. And I told him, I said, guys, let's just expect God. Let's just push the envelope with God for translation. How about if all the, at that day, on that day we had 44 of our churches connected on Zoom. I said, I want us to release faith. Okay. That God would translate us into Ayatollah Khamenei's palace all at once. So we can preach the gospel to him. Now see, I already like, like some of you guys is like blown your top already. We're in those times, folks. Okay. And we can preach to them. You know, when translation happens, you don't need a visa. And even if you're on their blacklist, they can't do anything with you. That's what I said. Can you guys believe with me? I, said, I mean, these guys are crazy. They believe anything I preach to them. I said, yeah. I said, begin to thank God so we can preach. To can you imagine Ayatollah Khamenei becoming, coming to Christ? That'll change the entire nation. That's what we're pressing for. The supernatural. Say supernatural. supernatural. Say too much God. Too much God. Say superabundance. Super Glory to God. Now stand up to your feet. If God has promised you something that it's beyond you. Amen. If it's beyond you, I want to pray for you because the gift of faith is in operation right now. But I want you, when I ask you to do something in a second, I want you to connect with what I'm saying and respond correctly. Respond accordingly, I should say. And believe that when hands are laid on you, that that impartation takes place for the supernatural to actually happen for you According to what you're expecting from God. Are you with me? Amen. Is that, That's a pretty straightforward uh, request I'm asking for you. Amen. But if God has spoken to you about the supernatural. Or something that's beyond you. And I remember. I never forget the first time I ever heard Brother Jerry preach. In our church in Tulsa. Victory Christian Center. I'm sitting in the bleachers. I'm, only, I'm green in this thing. I don't know anything. In those early days. I, I think I was six months in the Lord. And uh, this man is talking about Harleys. And he's talking about a lifestyle that pleases God. And I loved the way he was ministering. I said, God, i never forget. God, if I ever wanted to be a God man, I want to be like that man. Not knowing Four and a half years later, I'll be on staff with him. 
And it wasn't anything that I did. It just happened. God did it. The impossible became possible. Amen. See, that's the kind of God we serve. But I remembered his message. He said that he preached on, he says, if God has given you a dream, sow a seed for it, he said. And then he said this, if you don't have a heavenly vision, Paul said, I've not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. When he's standing before King Agrippa. I've not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. Amen. Don't be that way neither. Amen. Be committed to your vision. And God will honor it. Amen. But I remember he said that if you don't have a heavenly vision, connect with one, someone who has a heavenly vision and support it. And God will give you your own vision that he has for you. That stuck with me. Not knowing that four and a half years later, I'll be on staff with this man of God. Flying our, I remember one time we were flying to Seattle and we're flying over Denver. And I, I, we had just taken off from Denver. We're flying over there. And I, I used to live in Denver. I lived in that uh, in area. And, and I looked at and Highway 70. I could see Highway 70. I remember 10 years earlier, I was sitting there as a dopehead. I was standing there on the highway hitchhiking because I didn't have a car. And now I'm flying with the man of God, 35, or 30, I don't think we were at that high yet. But, you know, at that level, high there. And I'm looking down in, the, in this man's jet, serving the man of God. That's the kind of God we serve if you are willing, amen, to surrender. And the key to your miracle is your surrender. That's the point I'm trying to get to. Are you willing to say, I'm willing to go wherever you want me to go? I'm willing to do whatever you tell me to do. I'm willing to say whatever you tell me to say. I'm all yours, Lord. Do something in my life that is beyond me. And I tell you, when you get real with God, He'll get real with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to envision your dream. I want you to see it as done. Because it is already. It is. And I believe we're in a time, an era. We've stepped into a time in God. That you can experience it right now. I mean, but before you get home, you can experience it. Yeah. You with me? If I'm talking to you and you say, pray for me, I'm, I'm one of those. I, I want to flow there. I want to, I want to experience that. And if I'm talking to you, I want you to come up here. If, is that okay, Pastor? Renat? Okay. I want you to come up here and make one line. I want to lay hands on you. I know I said I want to have Angela share something about the Victory Channel, but we'll flow this way right now. <laughs> But Angela, I want you to come and give me a hand, please. Hallelujah. Just make one line. And if you want to go through the aisles, you know, and all that. But I'm telling you, God, hallelujah. He's going to do it, brother. In fact, he's done it already. And this decision that you are making here, you're stepping over time. You're stepping over time. Hallelujah. Say, I'm, say this after me. Say, I'm stepping over time. I'm stepping over time. I'm stepping into the supernatural. I'm stepping into the supernatural. I'm stepping into the fourth dimension. I'm stepping into the fourth dimension. Because that's where everything is. My dream is in the fourth dimension. And I'm bringing it down here. I am manifesting it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory to God. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I want to. Jesus. 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 
Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go that way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You ready? Jesus. That's it. Jesus. Jesus. We surrender. That's it. That's it. Jesus. Just take it. The gift of faith is in operation. Jesus. Jesus. We surrender to your will. Jesus. Out of your head. Into your heart. Where everything is. Jesus. That's it. Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Impartation. Jesus. Glory to God. Solamente que le estará bacate. Jesus. Glory to God, brother. Jesus. The Lord Jesus is here. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, do it, Lord. We connect with you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. That's it. Glory to God. That's it. Just receive. Just receive it. Hallelujah. Always say this. That's not, it's not in the falling. It's in the yielding. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with falling. And there's nothing wrong with not falling. Just receive. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Bless my sister. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you get home, lay hands on Tom. Amen. Glory to God. It's right there. Put that hand on him and you both have it. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. You know, bring those folks here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Listen, when I prayed in that church, Lord, do it. Jesus, do what you said. I didn't feel anything. It was just a, just do it, Jesus. But I promise you, by next week, you're going to have some testimonies of supernatural. That is beyond your wildest imagination. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Jesus. That's it. Glory to God. Jesus. That's it. 
You ready? I'm ready. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One week or less. I received that. In the name of Jesus. 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 You know, look at me. The Lord's going to do something special for you because you're special to Him. He adores you. I hear that in my heart. I love her. He adores you. Don't let anybody or anything tell you otherwise. Amen. Raise your hands up to heaven. Just receive. Jesus. That's it. That's it. Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> It's time. It is time. For no time. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus. Baghdad. Praise God. Lord, do it. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come here. Raise your hands up to heaven. Jesus. That's it. In the name of Jesus. Raise your hands up to heaven. That's it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I receive it. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now you are receiving. Take it. Jesus, I was watching you. You were milking this thing. Glory to God. Now. Now. Expect it now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bring that sister right here. She just walked up. Come here. Bring her here. Right here. Raise your hand up. Come on. Are you together? No? Are you together? Good. Raise your hands up to heaven. Just take it. In the name of Jesus. Now. Time has no authority over you. For now is the time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Anybody else? Raise your hands up to heaven. Take it. Jesus' name. That's it. Praise God. Come here, Brother Danny. I'll f- you come too, my brother. You come. Hallelujah. Don't worry about the keyboard. Come on, all three of you come. Hallelujah. We don't want to leave anybody out. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Jesus. He's going to give you a dream to confirm what you have heard. Lay hold of it and take it. And don't let go of it until you actually have manifested it. The name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Lord. Thank you, God. Do it, my Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. You know, don't discount dreams because that's one of the ways God speaks. 
And when the Lord gave me that dream, I want to just say this last thing before I turn it back to Pastor Annette. When the Lord gave me that dream, as I began to seek him, the Lord said this to me. He says, Cameron, do you remember what my son said? That the son can do nothing of himself except that which he sees the father doing. He says, I showed you what I'm doing. Don't take anything less than what I've shown you. Take it. And I believe that there's going to be dreams in this house, in your lives. I mean, I'll give you a simple example. In Afghanistan, in one village of 300 people, in one night, all 300 people had a dream of Jesus. As the Lord and Savior, and they got up, they, they're talking. He says, man, I had this, one guy says to him, I had this strange dream. This man in a white robe with pierced hands showed up. He says, I had the same dream. I had the same dream. Everybody said, the whole village came to the Lord. That's where we are. You know, that's where we are, guys. I'm telling you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He didn't need visa to go there. Jesus doesn't. He walks through doors and walls. And we can do the same. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love you all.